Hey, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. This is a second of the alchemy guys and shows you how to make all those pretty little flowers and butterflies make you more efficient at slaughtering everyone and everything you come across in Tamriel. But be aware, this is a detailed guide for gamers that want to play the game as intended, so no exploits or cheats here. Let's crack on. So in this guide we'll be looking at the more rare, useful and deadly potions that are particularly useful to the thief and assassin, but are good for any build, and I'll show you where to find the more common ingredients for those particular potions. For those of you that have the Rare Curious mod and the Purity perk, don't worry, there'll be a separate video dedicated just to them. I will be leaving links in the video description of several really, really useful sites to look at. These cover every aspect of Alchemy in Skyrim, so make sure you check them out. Okay, just before we start, I just have to say, if you're new to Skyrim and or Alchemy, please watch my first video in the series before you watch this one. Now, so we've got the basic of Alchemy under our belt, such as all potions are made at the Alchemy Lab, which are typically, but not exclusively, found around towns and cities. Uh, in places such as apothecaries, some inns, court mages, um, available as upgrades to our player homes. They are sometimes made available when you join a faction in a storyline such as a College of Winterhold or the Dark Brotherhood, etc. And we understand the positive and negative effects of ingredient combinations. Where it's possible to create a potion that gives you an effect that you want, but at the same time it affects you in a way that you don't want. For example, don't combine red mountain flower, grass pod or white cap, as this will produce a ravage magicka effect, which greatly reduces your maximum magicka, completely the opposite of what you're after. And we've made our alchemy gear, where you find or buy anything with the fortify alchemy enchantments on it, disenchant it at an enchanting table, then make the four pieces of gear that can be enchanted, which can absorb the alchemy enchantment, which are gloves or braces, a ring, an amulet or necklace, and any headgear such as a hat, hood or helmet, etc. And we've allocated our perks, uh, Alchemist, Physician, Benefactor, Poisoner, Concentrated Poison, Experimenter, Green Thumb, Snake Blood and Purity. And as I've mentioned before, I'll be covering Purity Potions in a separate video. And we've made the 10 potions that are essential to any build. Well, in my opinion at least. They are the Potion of Enchanting, the Potion of Smithing, the Potion of Bartering, the Potion of Cure Diseases, the Cure All Potion, Restore Health Potion, the Health Related Potion, Restore Stamina Potion, Restore Magicka and Resist Magicka. And in this video I'm going to show you 12 more potions that will set you up as a thief or an assassin and indeed can be used by any build anyway. And for each potion where and how to find the more common of these elusive ingredients. Note for the sake of brevity I can't show you the locations of all the ingredients but links are in the description which will guide you to the locations and many more potions that you may well find useful. And we'll start with Fortify Pickpocket. Every self-respecting thief should know how to pick a pocket or two, but the one perk that is essential to this build is Poisoned, which you get at level 40. The ability to kill or paralyse your victim should be in the lock of any player describing themselves as an, as an assassin. Use any two of the following ingredients. Blue Dartwing, Nordic Barnacle, Orange Dartwing, Slaughterfish Egg. Now the two I use for this potion are uh, Blue Dartwing or Orange Dartwing and the Nordic Barnacle. Blue and Orange Dart Wings can be acquired by catching the dragonflies. Now only half of them have blue wings, the other half yield orange. But both types of Dart Wings share the Fortify Pickpocket uh, effects and either can be used. And they're typically found near bodies of water, say rakes, uh, breaks? <laughs> rivers or lakes or ponds. Uh, each spawning site can generate a, a random mix up to 10 orange or blue dragonflies. The dragonflies spawn between 5 in the morning and 8 in the evening. And beware, some of the spawning sites um, can generate torch bugs uh, at night as well, which could be handy. Uh, they will fry away after a few seconds, so you need to be fairly quick to catch them. Some great places to look are the Yarl March Marshes near Morthal, Lake Honrick near Rifton, and Lake Illinalta, Illinalta <laughs> near Fall Creek. You know where I mean. Uh, Nordic barnacles. Uh, they can be found uh, 
around most water as well. Um, and you acquire them by harvesting Nordic barnacle clusters and they're found underwater. So keep your eyes open for them. They are only one of the three ingredients in the base game with a water breathing effect. So they are actually very good to have. Uh, they found the best place to find them is all along the coast for, uh, past Winterhold up to Solitude Lighthouse, um, Lake Honrick and Lake Illinolta as well, I got it right that time, uh, can be found there so you can catch your, uh, uh, your dart wings at the same time. Up next we have Fortify Sneak. Now your sneaking skills will naturally grow as you progress uh, through the game but you'll always need that little extra help to get you out of dire situations from time to time. And this is where this little beauty becomes an invaluable part of your inventory. Use any two of the following ingredients. Uh, Abacan or Abyssian Longfin, Ashen Grass Pod, Beehive Husk, Frost Miriam, Hawk Feathers, Human Flesh, Powdered Mammoth Tusk, purple mountain flower. Now the two I use for this potion are frost, miriam and purple mountain flower because these are found basically everywhere. Frost miriam uh, is a herb commonly found hanging uh, out to dry in homes uh, side by side normally with garlic and elves ear. It is not possible to harvest fresh frost miriam directly from the plants. However, like plants, harvested samples will respawn after a given length of time, which is normally the 10 days. Uh, the next ingredient I used was the purple mountain flower. And purple mountain flower is harvested from the purple flower variety of mountain flowers, obviously. And they're commonplace in the foothills and lower elevations of the mountains, uh, anywhere below the snow line. They're basically found everywhere, uh, in particular uh, the Falkreath Hold, the, the Riften, uh, the Rift, sorry, White Run Hold and uh, the Reach and they're found in, in the cities and uh, villages as well. Really common ingredients, so grab as many of these as you can on your wanderings. Next we have invisibility. Now there are always times when sneaking just isn't enough or you have to be, disappear from a very bad situation. And this is where this potion becomes an essential thing to carry. Never leave home without one. Use any two of the following ingredients. Ash creep cluster, churros eggs, crimson nern root, ice wraith teeth, lunar moth wing, nern root, and vampire dust, which is the first effect for uh, vampire dust. The two ingredients I used uh, were chorus eggs and nern root. Chorus eggs can be harvested from chorus egg sacks, which can be found in a high number of Falmer hives, but a great source is at chill wind depths in Yarl March. Uh, this is mentioned as so many other ingredients in, in that place uh, uh, that you can collect from that location. The greatest number is at Frost Flow Abyss in Winterhold. The next ingredient, as I mentioned, was Nern Roots, and that's a, great, a bright green plant that can be found throughout Skyrim, usually along uh, lakes and river banks. They glow, uh, making them easier to locate at night, and uh, also they emit a unique chiming sound. And you can find them, as I said, around any uh, lake and river banks, and you can also find nine around Serethi Farm uh, in the Rift and these of course respawn in the usual 10 days. And now we come to water breathing. This is one of those don't need it until you need it potions. Say for looking for sunken treasure chests, escaping from danger by diving into deep water or using it as a way of sneaking up to a target or location. It's handy to have in board just in case. So I'd always suggest carrying a few in your inventory. Use any two of the following ingredients, chicken's egg, uh, hawk eggs, his carp, Nordic barnacle and salmon roe. The two ingredients I used were chicken eggs and Nordic barnacles. Uh, chicken eggs can be harvested from chicken nests, surprisingly enough, which are found around most farms. The nests are usually in a little shed-like structure, but not always. Nests can be just outside on the ground. They can't be harvested from other birds' nests. 
an easy place to find them around farms, mills and cottages, but they're, they're reasonably widely available around Tamriel. Just keep your eyes open. And an old friend is the Nordic Barnacle. And as I mentioned before, Nordic Barnacles can be acquired by harvesting Nordic Barnacle clusters and they're found underwater. And they, you can find them all along the coast, past Winterhold, up to Solitude, Solitude Lighthouse and around Lake Honrick and Lake Ilanata amongst other places but these are probably the uh, you get the most from these areas and now we come to a potion that isn't used enough in my opinion and that's the fortified lock picking now this potion is essential to any build in my, in my opinion uh, especially for those master chests and when combined with decently enchanted lock picking gear even the hardest locks open with ease you never need to keep the skeleton key or need to waste perks in the lock picking skill tree Potions and gear is all you need and a quick FYI I did a complete guide to lock picking so if you're having difficulty with any aspects of it just go and check it out. Now use any two of the following ingredients Ashen Grass Pod, Farmer Ear, Namira's Rot, Pine Thrush Eggs, Spider Eggs. The two ingredients I used were Namira's Rot, and which is a fungus found on the floors of caves. It takes its name from the Daedric Prince Namira, and this little fungus can be found all around Tamriel, especially in cairns, caves, and mines. The greatest source is in Chilwind's, uh, Chilwind Depths, <laughs> as usual, in Yarlmarch. Uh, I also use Spider Eggs, uh, and they can be acquired by harvesting egg sacks of the frostbite spiders you meet on your travels around Tamriel. Um, eight of these, surprisingly enough, can be found in Chilwind Depths in Yarmarch. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff, poisons, and we'll start with pretty much a benign one, and that is Paralysis. It's a particularly helpful potion for the thief and assassin. Paralysis renders your target completely unable to move or attack until the potion wears off. Paralyze does not cause any direct da uh, damage to targets. However, because of the ragdoll effect, the victim might instead tumble off a cliff uh, and receive fall damage, potentially killing them. So you've got to be aware when you're using it. Enemies fall over when paralyzed and take a moment to get back up. Even a one second paralysis effect might disable them for several seconds, which might make it worth creating uh, an enchantment with more charges rather than a greater duration. Also, while they're getting back up, the enemy will be completely vulnerable to pickpocketing, allowing you to take any item, even if you have a 0% chance of stealing it. So if you need someone out of the way, and for whatever reason don't want to hurt or kill them, then this is a potion to use, insanely handy. Use any two of the following ingredients. Briar heart, canis root, gleam blossom, human flesh, imp stool, netch jelly, Swamp Fungal Pod and the two ingredients I used were Imp Stool and Swamp Fungal Pod. Uh, Imp Stool is a fungus found in caves all around Tamriel. It tends to be situated near the edges where wall and floor meets. Uh, 51 can surprisingly be found in chill wind depths in Yarmarch. It's categorised as a rare ingredient meaning that most Apothecary merchants have a 21% chance of selling it. In addition, it may randomly be found in rare type apothecary satchels. The next ingredient I use was a swamp fungal pod. And swamp fungal pod is a fungus found around the marshes of Yarmarch. And again, it's categorised as a very rare ingredient, meaning that most apothecary merchants only have a 15% chance of selling it. In addition, it may again be randomly found in rare type apothecary satchels. And next up, we have a proper assassin's potion. That's the damage health, ravage health, and weakness to poison potion. Damage health reduces the value of the target's health. The Ravage Health effect is a variant of Damage Health. It causes a flat total reduction of points of the target's maximum health points instantaneously. Weakness to Poison has to be applied prior to a dose of Poison for the weakness to take effect. For example, if the enemy is not weakened and you use a Poison with a Weakness to Poison effect, 
the damage will not be affected by the weakness at that time, but the enemy will be affected in a later use of the uh, poison. So you can hit them with this the first time, and then when you hit them with the second potion, that will magnify its effects. Now, this potion is absolutely excellent, and it requires three ingredients. The first is the death bell. Now, the death bell comes from a plant of the same name that's common in swampy areas such as uh, Yarmarch. Um, now, despite what it said, it does not have any fortified alchemy effects. There are no ingredients in the game that provide that effect. Its damage health effect has a larger magnitude than standard ingredients. I think it's one and a half times. Um, Ravage stamina poisons have the same magnitude as standard ingredients, um, but have a higher gold value. It is characterised as um, a rare ingredient, meaning that most apothecary merchants have a 21% chance of selling it. In addition, it may randomly be found in rare type apothecary satchels, although it can be found in many locations around Tamriel. Uh, the greatest concentration is around Yarmarch and Morthor. The second ingredient is a giant lichen and it's harvested from a fungus of the same name which is mainly found around the marshes of Yarmarch. It is categorised as a rare ingredient, um, meaning that most apothecary merchants only have a 15% chance of selling it. Uh, in addition, it may be randomly found in rare type apothecary satchels as are the others. It's worth noting the two locations having the greatest concentration of this, um, actually quite rare and difficult to find in green, because it is quite difficult to see. You'll find 40 around Movas Lair in Yarmarch and 20 around uh, Morthal, again, in Yarmarch. The third ingredient was a skeever tail. Skeever tails are dropped by dead skeevers and found all over Tamriel and can also be obtained from any spider web sacks that contained, uh, contain mummified skeevers. They cannot be obtained from already dead skeevers uh, found roasting over fires as you find in bandit camps, you can't get them from those. Those skeevers yield charred skeever hide instead, uh, but make sure you grab any charred skeever hides you find uh, for the cure diseases potion. Very important that, always, always grab any uh, charred skeever hides. It is categorised as a common ingredient, meaning that uh, apothecary merchants have uh, a 36% chance of selling. And in addition, it can be randomly found in barrels and in uh, apothecary satchels. And next up is Damage Health and Damage Magicka Regen and Lingering Damage Stamina. Now, Damage Health reduces the value of your target's health. Damage Magicka Regen decreases the target's magic regeneration by a certain period of time and dependent on the strength of potion. The um, lingering damage stamina drains the target's stamina by a certain period of time, again dependent on the strength of the potion. All three ingredients are required. First up is a chicken's egg. Chicken's eggs can be harvested from chicken's nests, oddly enough, which are found at most farms. The nests are usually in a little shed-like structure, but not always. Nests can be just outside on the ground. They can be found all around Tamriel, but typically can be found around farms, mills and cottages. Strangely, it is categorised as a rare ingredient, meaning that most apothecary merchants only have a 15% chance of selling it. In addition, it may be randomly found in only rare type apothecary satchels. Death bells again come from a plant of the same name, which is common in swampy areas such as Yarmulch. Despite what it said, it does not have any fortify alchemy effects. There are no ingredients that provide that effect. Its damage health effects has a larger magnitude than standard ingredients. Ravaged stamina poisons have the same magnitude as standard ingredients, but have a higher gold value. It is categorised as a rare ingredient, meaning that most apothecary merchants have a 21% chance of selling it. In addition, it may randomly be found only in rare type apothecary satchels, although it can be found in many locations around Tamriel. The greatest concentration is around Yarmarsh. And I'll include all that inscription again, just in case someone's uh, skipping through to this particular potion. 
And the third ingredient required is nightshade, which is a plant commonly found growing in graveyards. While it grows around death, it still needs light, preventing it from growing inside any crypts and barrows. The name and shape of this plant are known to all, long understood to be one of the more potent comp components in many poisons. The average uh, gnaw keeps its distance from the bright purple flower nestled amongst dark leaves. It is exceedingly effective as a pure poison but can also be combined with other compounds to stiffen joints as well. It is thus favoured amongst those who wish to disable their opponents in battle and can be found coating the blades of many of the more unsavoury carrots in Skyrim, mine being one of them. Those are found around much of Tamriel but are difficult to find. Notable places that offer easy access to the ingredients are uh, 11 in Solitude, 10 around the Hall of Dead in Falkreath Hold and 8 in Riften but you do find some around White Run and other places. It is categorised as a rare ingredient meaning that most apothecary merchants have a 21% chance of selling it. In addition, it may randomly found in rare type apothecary satchels. And we'll go back to a more basic po uh, potion and that's Damage Magicka, which is particularly good against mages and dragons. Damage Magicka reduces the value of the target's Magicka. Damage Magicka causes total points of damage instantaneously, depending again on the strength of the potion. Use any two of the following ingredients butterfly wings, churros eggs, daedra heart, eye of saber cat, glow dust, hog raven feathers, hanging moss, human heart, jarring ute or yarin root, uh, lunar moth wing, namira's rot, nordic barnacle, and trauma root. The two ingredients uh, I used were butterfly wings and hanging moss. Um, butterfly wings can be acquired by catching the orange monarch butterflies. You receive two wings for each butterfly you catch. It is categorised as a rare ingredient, meaning that most apothecary merchants only have a 15% chance of selling it. In addition, it may randomly found only rare type apothecary satchels. But you can find quite a few in the following locations. 17 inside Bloating Man's Grotto, that's in Falkreath Hold. 12 around Swindler's Den, just behind Whiterun. 11 around Whitewatch Tower. And 10 around Rorik's Dead, but you can find them all around uh, uh, Skyrim, in, well, in the non smart snowy parts anyway. The next ingredient I used was hanging moss. And hanging moss is harvested from plants found growing off rocky ledges, trees or dungeon ceilings. It's most commonly found in the Reach, but can be found in most Skyrim holes. Even though it's actually quite easy to find, it's still categorised as a rare ingredient, meaning that most apothecaries only have a 15% chance of selling. In addition, it may be randomly found in rare type apothecary satchels. Great place to find this ingredient are around Solitude City itself, and 73 are found in the Solitude catacombs. Now, these are marked as sealing, but don't worry, I've never ever had an issue in taking them. And you can find 63 inside Bloated Man's Grotto in Falkreath Hold. Now, these last potions are more for your protection when facing dragons or powerful opponents, so therefore essential to carry with you, in my, in my opinion. And the first up is, strange enough, Fortify Archery. Now, as far as... Uh, my assassin build is concerned i only include this to deal with dragons or bosses that are immensely powerful or immune to poisons you won't need fortify archery for assassinations as your poison should do the work for you but those pesky dragons can be a pain in the hole eventually and archery is a great way to deal with them quickly and of course sometimes you get into the uh, situation where a dragon continuously uh, flies around and you have to bring them down some way so for fortified archery use two of any two of the following ingredients canis root elves ear juniper berries and spider eggs the two ingredients I used were elves ear and juniper berries 
and elves' ear are harvested from branches of dried elves ear that are found hanging to dry inside homes and other buildings, typically side by side with garlic and frost miriam. It is not possible to harvest fresh elves ear directly from plants, however, light plants harvested samples will respawn after a given period of time. It is categorised as a common ingredient, meaning that all apothecary merchants have a 36% chance of selling. In addition, it may be randomly found in some barrels and in apothecary satchels. And juniper berries are small white berries harvested from the juniper, oddly enough, which is a small tree found growing in the reach. It is a categorised as a common ingredient, meaning that all apothecary merchants have a 36% chance of selling. In addition, it may be randomly found in some barrels and in apothecary satchels. The next two potions are resist potions. I tend to use these so I don't have to waste the enchantments on my apparel and as for all potions, they can be hotkeyed if you know in advance when you need them. The first of these are resist shock. Now shock does a lot of damage in Skyrim and you may not want to use the resist shock enchantment on your gear as I mentioned before. So this potion becomes essential if you, if you come across an enemy that you can't avoid by stealth or you must fight anyway. So always always carry some of these. Use any two of the following ingredients. Ash hopper jelly, blue dart wing, glow dust, glowing mushrooms, hawk beak, pearl, pine thrush egg and snow breeze. The two ingredients I used were Blue Dartwing and Snowberries. Now we mentioned Blue Dartwing before, um, they can be acquired by catching dragonflies, only half of dragonflies have blue wings, the other half yield orange dart wings. Typically found near bodies of water, rivers, lakes or ponds, each spawning site can generate a random mix of up to 10 orange and blue winged dragonflies. The dragonflies are spawned between 5am and 8pm. Some of the spawning sites generate torch bugs at night, which is good to know. They will fry away after a few seconds, so you need to be quick to catch them, and they can be tricky to catch. Some great places to look for them are Yarl March Marsh near Morthal, Lake Honrick near Rifton, and Lake Illinolta near Falkreath. Next up are snowberries. Snowberries are harvested from the snowberry plants, oddly enough, which is commonly found near the snow line. Snowberries are the only ingredient which have all three resist elemental effects, fire, frost and shock. You'll find stacks of these outside Windhelm, Dawnstar and Winterhold. Well, pretty much anywhere you'll find snow. And I guess you'll be absolutely delighted to uh, hear that we come up to the final potion. And if you honestly got this far, well, give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. Um, as with shock, you may not want to use any resist type enchantments on your gear, so this potion becomes essential, uh, especially if you become across an enemy that you can't avoid by stealth or must fight, uh, as with the shock one. This potion is particularly useful against dragons, so make sure you always have some of these in your inventory. Now, this potion requires all three ingredients. Uh, mud crab uh, chitin, and this is dropped by mud crabs oddly enough and this ingredient is not normally traded by apothecary merchants now the only way to make this ingredient become available from apothecary merchants is to unlock the merchants perk and that requires that level 50 speech um, at which point this becomes um, uh, commonly uh, available now I strongly urge you to get the merchants a perk now I did a video on this uh, if you want to see how to do it uh, quickly and you can actually combine this with enhancing your alchemy anyway my uh, chitin is normally found uh, well found abundantly around uh, yarl marsh but anywhere where there's uh, water snowberries uh, again we've mentioned these before they're harvested from the snowberry plant which is commonly found near the snow line uh, and snowberries are the only ingredient which has all three resist elemental effects fire frost and shock You'll find stacks of these outside Windhelm, Dawnstar and Winterhold, and pretty much anywhere you'll find snow, as we've already mentioned. And the last ingredient for this potion is the thistle branch, and thistle branches are harvested from thistle plants, oddly enough, found at lower elevations, especially amongst the southern fine um, 
Southern Pine Forest, but these are most abundantly found around White Run Hold and Falkreath Hold. And this is honestly an excellent uh, potion to have uh, when you're confronted by these pesky dragons. So again, I've got to say again, make sure you carry plenty of these. So there you have it, 12 potions that will make you immortal in Skyrim. Well, not quite, but boy, they'll help you on your journey in this game, I'll tell you for sure. Now, I know this was a long video, and if you stayed here to this point, give yourself a pat on the back. You're a true gamer that will suffer for game knowledge, and I'm sure you'll be absolutely delighted to know there's one more video in the series which explores the purity and rare uh, Curious Potions. So I hope to see you there. Well done, you deserve a bloody medal. See you later. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment and hit the bell next to the subscribe button after you subscribed obviously and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. See you later.